Good morning YouTube, uh, Arnold here. Um, today we're going to do something that has nothing to do with music, even though I use my computer to make the, the bass videos. Um, I'm a little bit uh, depressed this morning because my beloved Seattle Seahawks uh, ended their season last night. Uh, good game, good season, considering I, I figured they were rebuilding and they made it to the playoffs, so we'll take it. Uh, but, how should I console myself? I'm asking, how should I console myself? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to upgrade my Mac Pro. Um, this is, I'm going to call this my late life upgrade. Uh, I have a 2010 Mac Pro, the old style, um, that is fully upgradable. I'll talk about that in just a second. And I'm going to do some things to it, and I'll kind of walk you guys through it a little bit as we do it. Um, to me, one of the better machines that are available today, you can get them on eBay or Craigslist for three to five hundred bucks, and they're fantastic machines. Um, before we do this, I'm going to talk about the, the new Mac Pros. Uh, so the Mac Pro 2013 is what we call the trash can. It's like a black cylinder thing. Um, fan in the middle, sucks air up through the center of the core and, and, and hot it off the top. Um, very cool, aesthetically pleasing um, looking machine. Very powerful machine for its day, which was came out in 2013, so that's five years ago. Um, hasn't really been upgraded since then, and the knock on those machines is one, they're, they're pretty expensive to get a well equipped one, or uber expensive to get a well equipped one, up to eight, nine thousand um, dollars. And there's very limited upgradability. You can upgrade, I think, the memory to a certain level, and you can upgrade the CPUs, um, and that's about it. Uh, so, um, very expensive, um, not very customizable or upgradable, um, and as cool as they look, which they look really cool, the, the thing to me that's a turn off for that is that because you can't upgrade them, pretty much everything that you um, want to add to them has to be external. So you've got this nice cylinder, um, cool looking uh, machine, and then you have all these peripherals hanging off of it, which kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. Um, so, um, for the cost, um, they're just not, to me, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy one. Uh, they're, they're not worth it for the cost and for the reasons I talked to. And the other thing is, these machines, the ones I'm getting ready to show you here, are almost as fast, fully upgradable. They don't, I, actually, I think they do look pretty cool. They're big and bulky. Um, but, um, to me, the best buy. You get one of these things for three, four, or five hundred bucks. You upgrade if you want to, if you may not need to. Uh, add another couple hundred bucks to it, and uh, you've got yourself a world-class um, server machine, um, server grade machine, but that way you can use it for other stuff too as well. So, um, Having said that, let's talk about what we're going to do with my machine today. So today, um, we are going to have a cup of coffee because it's early and I'm staying up late watching the game. And we're going to take my CPUs out and I have in there two 2.93 um, gigahertz Xeon chips. I think they're Xeon X56 75, I believe that's what they are. Um, these are two new, or not new, but these are two uh, Xeon 80, 5680s, which are 3.33 gigahertz, six cores. Um, so that'll add me, I guess when I'm done with all this, about a 20% speed increase. Does it matter? No, not really. 20% what, what, is my, I going to see that? Um, I might, depend on what I'm doing, but for me it's just, a, I need something to do because I'm depressed. So. We're doing this. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put 32 more gigs of RAM in there. Uh, this is from uh, Outer World, Other World Computing. This is good RAM. Don't buy cheap RAM. Uh, this was a little bit more. I could have bought some other stuff that might have been 30 bucks cheaper for, for 32. Uh, but I know this is going to work. So the other stuff, when you buy it coming from uh, wherever, it might or might not work. This stuff is going to work. There's that. Um, I'm going to add to the machine uh, four USB 3 ports. Uh, right now it has USB 2s on it, and I've got a card like, excuse me, like this with the USB 2s. Uh, but I'm going to add these threes, give me a little bit more speed. I've got a couple of, of uh, external hard drives that I use for backup um, that could take advantage of this and make the machine back up a little bit faster. And what else? That's it. A couple things. I might. I got some. Um, I got some uh, compressed air downstairs, so I'll blow the, all the junk out of it while I have it open. Um, you need a three millimeter um, hex screw, uh, hex wrench, which is basically an Allen wrench. This one here is 10 inches long, uh, which is about what you need is to be comfortable. I've got one downstairs that I'm going to use. It's probably about five inches long. Uh, it's not quite as long as this one, but it's already down there set up. And you need some Arctic Silver uh, thermal paste to, to get your cooling squared away.
Okay, this is the inside of my Mac Pro. Um, I talked about the customiz customiz customization, customizability. Ah, I'll pick up, I'll make new words up as I go. Um, anyway, this is the inside of my Mac Pro. Um, here, of course, is the the tray for the CD-ROM. That thing just you have to unlock it. The lock's right here. Unlock it. You can see these things move as I unlock it. And you can pull that tray out right there like that. I'm not going to take it out right now. Power supplies here. Hard drives one, two, three, four. In my case, I have a uh, an SSD drive here, solid state drive here, and then I got traditional hard drive SATA drives for the for the other four. Uh, fan here to blow uh, intake and blow hot air out the back. This here is my uh, Radeon. I think it's a 7870. I know it is a 7870 video card. These are my USB 2 card right here. My three is going to go right there. Um, and this is CPU B. In a, so it's important to note um, there are two CPUs in here obviously and the heat sinks on these CPUs are not the same size so when you take this thing apart uh, you mark them A and B, this is A and this is B so this CPU controls this bank of RAM, that's my RAM and this CPU controls a separate bank of RAM back behind there which you'll see in a minute um, taking this thing out, like I said, it's very easy uh, to do um, you look at these two handles right here and on each of these handles there's a little serrated edge here so you just push that on the serrated edge like that and like that and I'm going to put this flashlight down got a bit of a sniffle here when you pull these things apart like that that thing disconnects from the motherboard and the whole joker slides out just like that and there's the motherboard right there so inside there is your motherboard, there's a connector another intake fan, outtake fan at the back so just a very good cooling system in here, very well designed machine
So we're going to turn this thing on together. This will be a either a triumphant moment, woohoo we did it, or it will be one of those oh you know what moments where something's not right. So let's turn it on, uh, turn the monitors on, and let's see what happens. Hit the power button right now. Okay, there's a power button on. The light's not blinking, that's a good sign. We're waiting, I hear the fan spinning, that's a good sign. And waiting for the... Come on. Come on. Oh, there it is. Ooh, that took a long time. Started, I'm starting to get nervous there. Okay, let's go up here and see what's going on up here at the monitors. There's the Apple logo. We like that. And there it is going through its stuff. We like that too. There it is going through its um, booting process. We like. There's my other monitor. Which is sweet. Where's my mouse? Let me get some of this. So as that comes up, it shows two 3.33 gigahertz, six cores Intel Xeons, and 64 megs of RAM, which is awesome. Um, there's all my RAM. So sometimes when it don't, if you don't put the put the CPU down um, with enough pressure, or if you if your thermal paste is right, if it's too hot, we'll check that in a second. Um, one of the indicators are that some of these RAM banks may not show up. So like you might have one or two of these banks that don't show up, and that's generally. Um, not generally, but sometimes it's to do with the pressure that you, that the uh, CPU is, is is mounted into the into the socket. But this all looks pretty good. Um, so far, so good. Uh, let me look at my temperature real quick. And of course, this is um, there's no load on this Joker yet. Let me get some on the glasses. Um, so those are all in the green. So that actually looks really good, actually. Um, it's actually running, you guys can't see it, but uh, the CPU A is at 52 degrees Celsius and my B CPU, the diode, is at uh, 42. So at the heat sink it's 47 at for A and 40, uh, 39 for, for B. So interesting, you know, I've seen some, some discussions on the, on the forums about the heat of these things or the, uh, how hot these CPUs get. So it's interesting, the A and the B, um, the way these CPUs are situated in the, on, the, on, the, on the board, um, the fan sucks air in, you can't see where my hand's at, and that air, the cold air coming from outside goes over the B CPU first through the heat sink over that CPU. So when it gets to the A CPU, it's about 10 degrees hotter when it gets to the A CPU. So what ends up happening is um, CPU A tends to read about 8 to 10 degrees hotter than CPU B, and that's that's part of the reason why that is. So when you see that, that's not abnormal. That's that's normal to to see a little bit higher reading on CPU A than on B. And the other thing with that is um, many programs don't take advantage of both the CPUs or all the cores. So CPU A is generally doing the bulk of the work unless you work on something that takes full advantage of both those CPUs. So anyway, um, I would say, cha ching, success. Um, I'm going to run some tests here. Um, and I'm not going to bore you guys with that, but I'll put the results on the back of this video. And uh, yeah, like the video. Uh, if you if you like the video, if you're if you're a base person, um, where's my base? Hang on. Sorry. There's two of my bases. Go check out my channel and uh, listen to my listen to my bass playing. It's not very good, but you know I'm having fun with it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, go Seahawks!